In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, I mean, many of you have memorized the beautiful first psalm from the third hour in the Agbeah, which starts, May the Lord answer you. It's Psalm 20. I want to talk to you about the answering of prayers, because sometimes I am asked, Why doesn't God answer? Sometimes the request is good, not bad. We know that God obviously won't answer bad requests, but if someone is asking for one of his children to come back to God, or someone asks for a solution to a marital problem, or success in general, or being healed, these are all good requests. There is nothing wrong with them. But God sometimes doesn't seem to answer. Let's investigate together concerning the answering of prayers and God's wisdom behind sometimes delaying the answer. Psalm 20, verses 1-3 to three. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Remember the expression, remember all your offerings. Because some people think that God forgot that you fasted or prayed with prostrations or cried for something. No, he remembers well. He also sees your sacrifices as something precious, not something simple. The first thing I want to say is that sometimes our requests are wrong. So let's exclude this. There is a verse that says, You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. That's from James 4 verse 3. If you, for example, ask for revenge or want to sin, this is a bad request. Don't expect that God will ease a particular sin for you. If it is bad, you won't receive it. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. If it's all about pleasure, he won't answer you. If all your life is based on pleasure and something disrupted it, he won't answer if you asked him to remove this disruption. All your life was pleasure. This, so, this disruption was for your benefit. This disruption may be a sickness or a problem. If he solves it, you will go back to living for your pleasures. Remember that God taught us the following principle. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. If you think about money and ask for it, this is not good. This is not what God wants. Also, the body and illnesses are not the most important things. We all will get old and die. Whatever we do, if we hold on to the earth, it will end. It, life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Focus on the quality of life, not the quality of food. The body's purity is more important than your outside appearance. God tells us to ask for something meaningful and valuable. Here I also remember a verse that shows us why our lives don't have peace or fruit. Jesus said that the land with the thorns has three things that hinder the fruit. He named them. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things. That's from Mark 4. 19. If you pray for these three planted in your head, your prayer isn't powerful. God cares about you. Why do you carry the burden of the cares of this world? Deceitfulness of riches is caring about your appearance and position. You are far away. Desires for other things enter it, choke the word, and make the, make the prayer cold. These things hold on to your mind and present obstacles to your prayers. The phrase God doesn't answer prayers, which some people say, is inaccurate because this would mean that God is a liar. However, he certainly is not a liar. The psalm says, in Psalm 139, For there is not a word on my tongue, O Lord, you know it altogether. God does answer, but answering prayers means something different for God. For you, answering your prayer is doing what you desire. For God, answering the prayer is coming to you and being close to you. He knows that he himself is more important than any request. He can do anything. Answering the prayer for God means opening the door when you knock so you see him face to face. He comes in person. This is answering the prayer from God's perspective. You might ask, okay, but what about the problem? What problem? God has arrived. So long as God has arrived, there is no problem. Remember Daniel's three friends in the fire? They were praying because of the fire, which was terrifying. God's answer was that he came and walked with them. The problem automatically went away. When the disciples want, wanted the sea to calm down, what was the answer? Jesus Christ arrived. Then he and Peter walked on the high waves. 
And what about the problem? So long as Christ has arrived, the problem is trivial. When Abraham prayed to have a son, God said, okay, and came to him himself. This was the answer. But what about the problem of having a son? Later, but for now, Christ has come. Abraham became a man of faith with powerful prayers. God's answer means that he comes. If you understand this, this will be the most amazing answer to the prayer. Whatever the request is, you leave it till it happens. The children will come to him in their own time. The problems will be solved in their time. The illnesses will or will not be cured. It doesn't matter anymore. This is when you understand that answering means God's presence. This is why he said in Matthew 7, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. What will the one who asks receive? Jesus didn't say he will receive what he asked for. To use language from the Holy Fathers, he will receive grace. He will receive the Holy Spirit. He will receive heaven. Prayer gives us the best thing, which is Christ and his kingdom. When he comes, heaven comes with him. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, heaven will be your destiny. But the other requests that you want will be solved according to his wisdom. He sees the best way to solve them and what the best timing is, whether now or later. Maybe the problem, if it gets more complicated, will bring about a better result. His wisdom is completely different from ours. Remember Jacob. He was terrified to meet Esau. He stayed all night terrified because he knew that Esau hated him. He asked to be saved from him. God answered by going to him. Jacob held on to him and didn't want to let him go. This is the answer for the request. The issue with Esau is easy. After a few hours, he found out that there was no problem. Esau cried when he saw him, and the meeting went smoothly. A beautiful verse that explains the verse, For every one who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened, is the verse from Jeremiah 29, which says, You will seek me and find me. Don't seek anything else. The best prayer is saying, God, I want you. Not healing, not success, not comfort, not even things I care about. I want you, and that's all. The Lord is my portion. Don't tell me I'll give you money. Don't tell me I'll give you health. Don't tell me I'll give you good children. I don't care about these things. Give me you, and the other things will come naturally. Jeremiah 29, You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. This is what we need to do. If you ask why your prayer isn't answered, you still pray with half of your heart, or less. If you are praying from all your heart, you will experience this. You will experience God's visit. Revelation 3, I will come in to him and dine with him, and he with me. We will come to him and make our home with him. That's from John 14. This is big. Our Lord will come to, to your home and talk with you. If God is talking to you, you won't need anything anymore. 